We're going to talk uh, about the post-Watergate uh, era in American politics uh, through the 70s, uh, Presidents Ford and Carter. Uh, we'll start with President Ford. He, uh, he began as a congressman from Michigan. Of course, he uh, served on the Warren Commission. Uh, he was a strong advocate of the lone assassin theory put forward by the Warren Commission. He was tapped by Richard Nixon to be vice president in 1973. Uh, Nixon's vice president, uh, a corrupt governor from Maryland named Spiro Agnew, had been forced to resign in the fall of 73, and Nixon picked Ford to take his place. Uh, some people cynically said that this was Nixon's uh, impeachment insurance. Uh, Ford was not regarded as the, sh uh, as the sharpest knife in the drawer, and it was thought that maybe Nixon had chosen Ford because the Congress would be hesitant to impeach him, knowing that it would get Ford as president. Um, Gerald Ford enjoyed a brief um, honeymoon with the American people when he first became president, but he quickly ruined that by pardoning Nixon. Uh, looking back on this, you can see that this is probably the right thing to do. Um, I don't think Ford wanted to um, act as president with the ongoing Watergate scandal, with a possible Nixon trial, and all the controversy and division that that would cause. So Richard Nixon was pardoned for any crimes he may or may not have committed. And this turned a lot of people against the president. Uh, Ford was also president during a time uh, when the economy, the United States economy, was uh, taking uh, some big hits. Uh, inflation was rising. This destroyed the buying capacity of the American consumer. Uh, interest rates were beginning to rise. I remember Ford had a, uh, a publicity campaign. It was called WIN, W-I-N, Whip Inflation Now. Uh, a lot of people made fun of this. And Ford was the butt of a lot of jokes on a new program that debuted in 75 on uh, late Saturday night. Uh, indeed, Saturday Night Live. Uh, Chevy Chase played uh, President Ford, bumping his head, falling down, getting confused, um, in general being something of a buffoon. Uh, the president seemed to take this ridicule in good, uh, good naturedly, but um, over time, I think ridicule does have a sort of a drip, drip, drip effect, uh, wearing away your credibility and uh, public respect. Ford also presided over the uh, true end of the Vietnam War. Uh, of course, the Americans uh, had withdrawn entirely by January of 73, but the Vietnam War went on for another year and a half, finally concluding in 75 uh, with the North Vietnamese overrunning South Vietnam. Uh, the Ford administration um, also suffered two assassination attempts. Uh, both of these truly were lone nuts. Uh, Squeaky Fromm, uh, a follower of Charles Manson, the notorious murderer, and um, another woman named Sarah Jane Moore, uh, sort of a small-time political figure on the uh, periphery of the left. Uh, both women took shots at President Ford. Um, uh, he was not hit. He survived. The uh, 1976 presidential campaign will see Ford uh, running for the Republican nomination uh, against a challenger, Ronald Reagan, the former governor of California. Uh, Reagan could excite the passions of the Republicans in, across the country. Um, you see here the rise of what we would later call the neocons, uh, the neoconservatives. Uh, Ford was not quite conservative enough. Uh, he was not an effective speaker. Of course, Reagan was and Reagan could fire the passions of the conservative uh, elements of the country and the Republican Party. So this would be a very bloody campaign uh, for the nomination, uh, very close, went right down to the end. Uh, Ford did win the, nomina the nomination, but then was defeated in 1976 by uh, the former governor of Georgia, Jimmy Carter. Uh, we'll talk about Carter here for a moment. Carter's um, I guess in retrospect, you could say that Carter suffered uh, very bad luck as president. Uh, you could almost look at it in terms of Chinese history, where the mandate of heaven has been withdrawn from President Carter as one catastrophe after another seemed to beset his presidency. 
uh, economically, the country was in a mess. Um, rates of inflation were uh, double digit. Uh, interest rates were climbing so that uh, consumer spending was shrinking. Unemployment was climbing. Uh, there were gas lines. It wasn't so much the, um, the price of gas, it was the very availability of gas. Uh, very frustrating time economically, and the president took uh, the brunt of criticism for this. In foreign policy, uh, there's a mixed record here for the Carter administration. On the one hand, he recognized the uh, sort of anti-imperialist and decolonization mood of the world in signing the treaty allowing um, sovereignty uh, for the canal to revert to Panama. Uh, this treaty was opposed by many conservative elements in the country, uh, but it was ratified by the Senate. So this is a positive diplomatic move, and I think historical move for the United States. Uh, Carter's greatest achievement, perhaps, was the Camp David Accords. He managed to get Menachem Begin, the Prime Minister of Israel, and Anwar Sadat, the President of Egypt. Uh, he managed to get them to Camp David, uh, the presidential retreat there in Maryland and he um, sort of banged their heads together for a couple of weeks until he got an agreement from these two men who did not like each other and nor did they uh, trust each other. Uh, Carter's persistence though paid off in a peace treaty between Egypt and Israel and we can all thank our lucky stars for this. This has taken Egypt out of the equation to some degree when it comes to uh, Arabic hostility towards Israel. Uh, the two countries that we pay the most money to in foreign aid are, of course, Israel and Egypt. Uh, you get the sense sometimes that we have been paying these two countries now for a few generations not to shoot at one another. Uh, at any rate, it's a, it's a good bargain for us and everyone else in the Middle East. Carter's uh, presidency towards uh, the end uh, uh, saw a couple of dramatic developments. For one thing, Carter was trying to continue the Nixon legacy of negotiating uh, arms limitation talks with the Russians. Uh, SALT II, they called it. SALT meaning uh, an acronym, meaning Strategic Arms Limitation Talks. Uh, this, these negotiations were in full swing um, when two events occurred, which would dramatically change things. First, in 1979, the Iranian Revolution took place. Uh, almost overnight, one of our strongest allies in the Middle East, Iran, uh, became a uh, very hostile, full-scale enemy of the United States. The Shah of Iran um, was deposed. Uh, a fundamentalist Islamic leader, the Ayatollah Khomeini, uh, came into power. Uh, the United States suddenly became the great Satan in the eyes of the Iranian people. Our embassy personnel were held hostage by the Iranians for a solid year or more. Uh, in fact, they weren't released until the day that Ronald Reagan was inaugurated president, uh, Jimmy Carter's last day in office. So the, uh, the American people got to watch nightly the reports on the hostages, the reports on this sort of endless crisis with Iran. Uh, we didn't seem to have any method of um, alleviating this crisis. Carter did try in the spring of 1980 a military operation to go in and rescue the hostages. Uh, this ended up um, in a disaster in the desert as a couple of helicopters collided with each other. And the American people, I think, began to sense that their president uh, uh, did not have the capacity for this job whether it was bad luck, the withdrawal of the mandate of heaven, or whatever it might have been, uh, Carter simply wasn't up to it. The second event that fundamentally changed everything was the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. This uh, caused a great deal of alarm. Uh, the president declared that any further Soviet move towards the Persian Gulf uh, could result in war. Um, this was the first time that the Red Army had been employed outside the borders of the Soviet Union since the Second World War. So it was very alarming. It looked as if the Soviet Union was again expanding, uh, moving aggressively against its neighbors. The, uh, the fact is that a communist government in Afghanistan had been deposed, and the Soviets were simply trying to reinstate 
uh, a communist government um, in Afghanistan. Afghanistan, of course, borders uh, on the Soviet Union. So the war in Afghanistan and the Iranian Revolution uh, fundamentally overturn uh, the status quo in the Middle East. Um, ironically, the um, United States would begin supplying weapons, uh, primarily Stinger missiles, to the Mujahideen in Afghanistan, including groups led by Osama bin Laden, who were seeking to destroy the Red Army or at least drive it out of Afghanistan and reclaim Afghanistan for Islam. The, uh, the United States would also, uh, in the early 80s, begin to arm uh, Saddam Hussein, uh, the president of Iraq, for the simple uh, purpose of trying to destroy this new Islamic government in Iran. Remember, Iran had been a longtime ally and friend of the United States, but with the Iranian Revolution, they became our enemies. Um, and just uh, as an aside, yesterday, uh, the United States and Iran concluded uh, an agreement supposedly limiting the um, development of nuclear, nuclear capabilities in Iran in exchange for the lifting of sanctions. Uh, President Obama is hailing this as one of the great uh, achievements of his uh, administration. Uh, his conservatives uh, on Capitol Hill disagree. So the next few weeks or months are going to be interesting to see how this plays out. But nevertheless, uh, a generation ago, uh, the United States began to arm Iraq to take down this new Iranian fundamentalist Islamic government. Uh, this will result in a long, bitter war of about eight years. In fact, while the war between Iraq and Iran is taking place, uh, simultaneously with the uh, Red Army's occupation of Afghanistan. Now, uh, President Carter will run for re-election in 1980 uh, against Ronald Reagan. You'll remember that Reagan lost the nomination in 1976, but Reagan had gained uh, a great sort of groundswell of conservative support in this country. And in the election of 1980, he swept Carter uh, uh, in historic proportions. I think President Carter won maybe two or three states, uh, maybe Georgia, Minnesota, maybe Massachusetts, I can't remember. But it was pretty much a... Uh, a landslide. I remember the networks calling the election as early as 7.30 in the evening. Uh, elections usually aren't called to much later, but it was obvious that the American people had had enough of Jimmy Carter. And, um, and now the great communicator and ex-actor Ronald Reagan will uh, become president of the United States. And we will uh, we'll discuss Reagan's presidency in our next lecture.